What are Matt DiBenedetto's options for 2024? Options are slim for NASCAR's first openly Christian pro-American driver. Just a joke. Don't come at me in the comments, at least not yet. Matt Benedetto announced earlier this year that he is leaving Rackley War Racing, his truck series team, at the end of the season to pursue more exciting opportunities in 2024. What were those opportunities? Well, we've come to find out that there aren't any, at least none that have materialized and signed Matt Benedetto. His team, in return, when he announced that he would not be returning, went ahead and fired him with three races to go in the season because if you're not racing for a championship, then really what's the point of you being around here? So they kicked him to the curb, and like every other team he's been a part of, his exit from that team was not without a little bit of eyebrow raising is probably the best term for it. Now Matt Benedetto is at another career crossroads, and it fits his underdog story, right? Everywhere he goes, he always likes to be the underdog. He likes to be that plunky little energetic guy that's like, he's going to go out there and get it for the little guys, and he panders to whatever crowd will give him the most attention. First it was Reddit and the internet with the whole De Burrito thing and the Italian Americans, and they've now since moved on to Tommy DeVito. They don't need Matt Benedetto anymore, and now he pandered to the alt-right crowd when he was with the Wood Brothers, and right now I think he's currently wondering where he might be standing at, pandering to the boomers on Facebook, since that seems to be where he and his wife like to spend a lot of time, and each to each their own. But his options for 2024 are not really that great, at least not as great as he probably thought they were. There's some mid-tier truck series teams that he could hop in with, a couple mid-tier Xfinity teams, or just move on and be an Amazon driver. Or a postal service, probably. The benefits are better than Amazon. Probably better hours, too, and at least you have like a government pension from that. So if you're looking in the delivery game, I would recommend USPS over Amazon. Probably get to set better out. Doesn't matter. Well, it might matter for Matt DiBenedetto if he doesn't find a job. And right now, he said that he's working on updating everybody. And every time he updates everybody, he just updates them on the update that there's still no update. And that's kind of where we remain with Matt DiBenedetto. So what are Matt DiBenedetto's options for next season? Well, in the truck series, all the good rides are gone. We'll just be completely honest. All the good, all the really good rides. Sure, Hattori, HRE still has two open seats that they haven't that haven't been accounted for. Possibly he could end up there. More than likely not. They did take on a pay driver with Tyler Ankrum last year. They did as well with Austin Hill. Brett Moffitt was out of that ride when they took on Austin Hill as a pay driver. But Matt Benedetto just doesn't fit that. He doesn't bring enough money to buy a ride. If he did, he'd already be in a ride. So the truck series, at least in competitive cars, trucks, is not probably not there for him. Young's Motorsport also has an opportunity, uh, an open seat there. Not sure he ends up there, but it feels more likely than he could end up at, at HRE. And then, of course, there's like the Rayoon Brothers, but that is like backmarker equipment. Or he could go to G to G, glory to God, with Tim Baines, because the two of them do share, or at least when Matt was pandering to that crowd, they do share an ideology, which could be interesting, like I said. Pro-America, openly Christian, that's Tim Vane's kind of guy. And then he can move on to the Xfinity Series. And I think, honestly, when Matt Benedetto announced that he was leaving Rackley War, he thought he would be able to slide into one of those competitive Xfinity Series rides, right? Because at the time, there were a bunch of open seats available that hadn't been accounted for. But Xfinity Silly Season moved pretty fast, and those seats were taken up pretty quickly, especially if you had money. And Matt Benedetto doesn't have money, and he's not part of a driver development pipeline, so... All of those seats dried up. He probably thought he could slam in at Colleg or, or maybe even JGR, but those opportunities never came to pass. So now he's left with opportunities maybe at SS Greenlight or Alpha Prime, which fits him, right? Because Matt does think he's a bit of an alpha. If you've ever seen those weird workout videos or those times he's like hanging out in his underwear playing eye racing, it's very bizarre. Please don't do that. Or if you do, like don't televise it for everybody. It's odd. So his options are pretty slim. In the Cup Series, there's still two unaccounted for chartered rides, at least. The number 16 car at Colleague or the number 15 car at Rick Ware Racing, and he's not going to get either of those. So Matt Benedetto took a chance on himself, and it looks like it's backfired on him. Could he have stayed at Rackley War? All signs seem to point that he likely could have, at least for another year. Who knows what the team's plans actually are. Uh, but... And there's certainly a certain sect of NASCAR fans that still absolutely adore this guy. He has a decent following. I would say that his following has certainly dwindled over the last few years as more fans have kind of figured him out in a sense, his pandering at least. I'm not going to call him a fraud because I don't necessarily think that he's ever been fraudulent other than maybe, again, pandering to the crowd. 
But in terms of his fanfare, it's certainly not what it used to be. And that makes a lot of sense, right? He went from the Cup Series down to the Truck Series into a mid-tier mid -tier Truck Series team. And in 360 National NASCAR Series starts, he has exactly one win, and that was a controversial one in the Truck Series race at Talladega in 2022, one that he probably shouldn't have won if NASCAR would just correctly call their races. Matt Benedetto, though, his career has just always been this up and down, this underdog story, this plunky underdog, like I said, that just can never crest the hill. He had opportunities to win when he was at Levine Family Racing, Bristol Night Race, everybody knows about it, and he threw that race win away. He gave it to Denny Hamlin and then got out afterwards and was like, oh, shucks, that cost me there. And then when he was with the Wood Brothers, he had a couple opportunities, including one at Talladega where he just got out of the way like he was Moses parting the sea and let Brad Keselowski go on to win the race. And then he gets out after the race and he's like, oh, we almost had it. You did have it. You should have had it. And then in his third race with the Wood Brothers ever at Las Vegas, he almost wins that race. At least he restarted with an opportunity to win. I think he came home third that day. But... Every single time, he just never capitalizes on that. He's the Daniel Hemrick of NASCAR at this point, just minus a championship. And for everything that Matt Benedetto's done, every team he's left hasn't exactly had great things to say about him. When he left the Go Fast number 32 car, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody over there that has that great of things to say about him. Then he went to Levine Family Racing and got replaced by Christopher Bell because it just makes sense. I think we all agree that Christopher Bell is more talented. He then moves on to the Wood Brothers when Paul Menard gets out of that ride. And he's told 18 months in advance that he would not be back. And instead, he acts and plays a victim like, oh, I really thought I had an opportunity at this. And Roger Penske even went on Sirius X in NASCAR and was like, yeah, Matt built it up in his head that he had an opportunity to stay here. We told him a year ago that he would not be here. Essentially, what Penske said is we're going to, quote, give him a year to build his brand. And when Brad Keselowski decided to move on to RFK in 2022, Matt Benedetto thought that he would just move into that number two car or possibly stay with the 21 and Austin Cindric would move into that two car. And instead, Penske was like, no, we're going to go ahead and put Austin in the two car and Harrison Burton in the 21 car, and then we'll go from there. But Matt Benedetto didn't see it that way, and he couldn't understand why, and his fans still don't understand why he was replaced by Harrison Burton, and they'll cite the stats right now. But the thing is, we knew what Matt Benedetto's ceiling was, and we didn't necessarily know what Harrison Burton's was. For Matt Benedetto, he took a chance, like I said, on himself, and it hasn't worked out. Not in the same way that like Ryan Priest taking a chance on himself worked out uh, for him. Matt isn't going to have that same opportunity. And every time he gives an update about what his plans are for next year, he's always like, I'm not working on just next year, I'm working on five to ten years down in my career. But he might just want to work on next year because if he's out of the series for a year, people are going to forget about him, right? He doesn't bring that much speed. He doesn't necessarily bring a ton of setup knowledge or feedback, certainly not on the same level as other guys. Sure, he's a bit more mature and maybe wouldn't make some of the same irrational decisions that an 18 or 20 year old would make in the truck series or the Xfinity series, but he doesn't have that raw speed. He's kind of the Mendoza line and honestly, he might even be below the Mendoza line. He's not overly average, he's just there. He's a fringe playoff guy in a down year, is essentially what he is. Uh, and that's not a bad thing, right, if a team's looking for that, but he's not a guy that's going to go out there and win races, and he's not going to contend for a championship, at least not at the cup level. Could he in a proper truck program that has speed? Possibly. But at the end of the day, Matt Benedetto is just what he's always been, middle of the road. And there's nothing wrong with that, you can certainly make a career out of this, but his whole demeanor and how he burned bridges with Ford and Penske when he was pandering there at Phoenix in his last race with the Wood Brothers, how he left go fast, and just how he's done basically his career up to this point is a Fernando Alonso of making bad decisions in NASCAR, except Fernando Alonso continues to get paid millions upon millions of dollars in Formula One despite making terrible career moves. Matt Benedetto is making thousands of dollars on his bad career moves. So his options are pretty limited. Like I said, there's a couple truck series rides, not very competitive ones. There's a couple Xfinity rides, not ones that are going to be competitive week in and week out. They'll be competitive on certain tracks. Or, like I said, he can take up another career in driving just with Amazon or USPS. Or The possibilities there are kind of endless. He could become a DoorDash person, a Grubhub. He could become a big Bubba Wallace fan by being a DoorDash driver. Probably would hate that. But for Matt Benedetto, I... Honestly, his name doesn't come up in the rumor mill that much anymore. 
Uh, he just doesn't have the staying power that he once did. It's a guy that is a perfect case study on how not to sort of direct your career. And he's done a really good job of making poor decisions up to this point. So at the end of the day, I'd like to see a guy land on his feet somewhere. But if he doesn't, I think we all understand why. And it's not because he's necessarily a bad person. I don't think he's a bad person. I just don't think that he has that natural raw speed. And especially when you can go out and hire a 20 year old that can get the same results as him and the same equipment, who's going to likely be cheaper at that. So Matt Benedetto, the curious case continues on. We'll see what happens with him. Let me know in the comments where you think he'll land. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard. Like and subscribe to the channel, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Plug.